Okay, well, I guess we'll go ahead and get started. And then if people want to keep trickling in, great, the more the merrier. Um, first of all, thank you for being here and joining us tonight. Um, my name is Katie. I'm one of the Slow Books curators, and I'm here with my counterparts, Tammy and Margaret. Um, we also have a fourth curator, Cedar, who um, is unable to be here tonight, but just want to make sure she gets credit as well. Um, and then thank you to Brian from Slow Food USA, um, the new communications director. He's kind of on the back end of things, managing the chat and um, making sure that you can all see and hear us. Um, so thank you to him for being here. Um, just a little uh, introduction. I'm pretty sure if you're here, you know what Slow Food is, but just a refresher. Um, Slow Food is an international organization that started in Italy in the 80s. Uh, it was kind of started as the anti-fast food movement. So picture a bunch of uh, Italian grannies with their homemade pasta. Um, they stormed the steps of the Spanish steps and were uh, protesting the building of a McDonald's. Um, and now it's, you know, and uh, there's chapters in almost, I, well, I don't want to say every country, but almost every country, there's chapters all over the place. And Slow Food USA is the national arm of that movement uh, and has over, I believe, a couple hundred chapters just in the US. So hopefully you're tuning in from one of those chapters or just um, a surrounding community slash uh, fan club. Um, and Slow Books is the newest working committee of Slow Food USA. So we're just about a year old. Uh, we started last year, kind of around pandemic times. So we are very new, um, but we are here to help, help facilitate uh, Slow Food chapters and communities throughout the network uh, to talk about books. Um, so this is our second annual um, network-wide read-along. We did one last year and we're trying it again this year. Um, so thank you for coming on that journey with us. Uh, and I'm going to actually pass it over to Margaret for a second, who's going to give you a little quick rundown of how Slow Books got started. Great. Thanks, Katie. And thanks to everybody for being here tonight. Um, I'm a uh, I'm a librarian, a library director in uh, Vermont, and I'm at my library now. So um, one of the things I love about Slow Books is that it combines uh, slow food and uh, reading and books, which are two of the things I, I love the most. So um, I'm the newest member of the Slow Food Books group, and I am um, uh, excited to tell you a little bit about our background. Um, the Slow Food Books group came together in April of 2020. I think it was um, sort of something to do during the pandemic, excuse me, people are coming in the library, I've got to wear my mask. Um, and it was Tammy and Katie here who um, got things up and running. Um, then they got quite uh, ambitious and started a network summer reading of how to be an anti-racist in June of 2020 and developed a nice collaboration with um, bookshop.org, which is a great um, online um, bookseller that supports independent bookstores around the country. So if you haven't found out about them, they're great. And they also host the Slow Books site where you can find out all the information about all the other um, books that we uh, love and recommend. We um, now have a monthly um, book program. So we, each of us, we've divvied up the year and we each take a month and, and share some of our favorite books. Um, we are um, excited to offer this program. Braiding Sweetgrass, I think, is beloved by so many. And if you don't already know it, you're in for a treat. And um, I, if I've missed anything, I'll ask Tammy or Katie to jump in and, and uh, take it from there. But um, welcome, and we're interested in hearing what you might have to say as well. Thanks so much. Thank you, Margaret. And then Tammy, I don't know if you want to do a quick introduction of yourself as well. Sure. Uh, hi, I'm Tammy, and I am in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And uh, I'm happy to be part of the slow books. I was just saying in one of our 
regional meetings that it would be nice if there was a place for some of the chapters to go to who do book clubs and find a list of books that we've already all been curating in our chapters and coming up with on our own and stuff. So um, the Slow Food USA folks helped us start, helped create a group actually. So we started doing it more than just that, but the bookshop.org was a really, um, we'll talk more about that later, but it was a cool way to show all of the books that we've compiled from different chapters and been adding to, but yeah. And then I'm a teacher. Do you wanna say a little more about you, Katie? Sure, so I'm actually a, a former chapter leader from the Chicago board. Um, I just rolled off in 2020. Um, so this was the perfect kind of segue into uh, staying connected to the network. Um, I recently got my MLIS, which is the degree that you get to become a librarian. Um, so I live and breathe all things books. And uh, it just seemed like the perfect uh, synergy of, you know, wanting to remain involved with with slow food, um, but also promote books that are good, clean and fair, just like you know, we talk about in the slow food movement. And there's a lot of intersect intersections, um, you know, which we'll talk about later, I think with this book and even with how to be an anti-racist, neither of them are books that are specifically about food on a surface level, but they all relate back to some of the ideals and values that we try to promote um, as slow food advocates. Uh, so I think that's where these conversations can get really interesting um, and engaging. So we will go ahead and kind of get into the meat of things here. I did want to quickly drop in the chat um, our code of conduct, just kind of a gentle reminder. Let's you know respect each other, um, listen, and not attack uh, attack not attack people, um, but challenge ideas, uh, and just have a respectful conversation. Um, okay. With that, I think we're going to do uh, uh, just a kind of little, everyone, if you feel comfortable, turn on your camera. If not, totally fine. Um, you can also use the chat. Um, but we're just going to do a few little questions, see kind of where people are at, um, and kind of do a little poll of everybody out there. So let's see. First of all, how many of you have ever been involved in a book club before of any kind, not necessarily slow food related? No, I have. All right, so like close to half of us at least. Um, great, probably more than half of us, awesome. Um, how many of you have attended a book club specifically affiliated with a slow food chapter? Okay, great. And then how many of you have heard of this title before? I'm assuming you have if you're here, but just humor me, you know, it, you, you maybe showed up and had never heard of it. Okay. And then um, how many have already read the book, have already read Breeding Sweetgrass? Great, okay, so some of you are already way ahead of the game. And lastly, how many of you host, I hope everybody raises their hands, plan to host a discussion of braiding sweetgrass, either in your community or with your soul food chapter? Awesome, great. So that's why we're here, right? That's the meat of this. Um, we are hoping to provide some, some resources for you all um, so that you can go and have conversations back with your local chapters. Um, and, you know, we're trying to kind of be that librarian for you. We're trying to be that resource connector, um, offering up, um, you know, discussion questions and different resources that hopefully will help make those discussions easier for you. I'm sorry, I feel like I just use resources like 10 times in the same sentence. But anyway, um, so moving on, we're going to talk, each of us, uh, Tammy, Margaret, and myself are going to talk a little bit about why we chose this book, why we felt it was important that this be the title for this year. Um, I'll start personally. Um, you know, before the pandemic started, I was working as an independent bookseller 
And um, well, unfortunately, I wasn't still in that role when the book came out. Um, I had been connected with some various books, book lists and recommendation sites. And it seemed like that title was coming up quite a bit. Um, so it was just something that I, it was almost like subconscious, like it was, it was in there and I didn't even know it. Um, and then we welcomed a new member to Slow Books, which happened to be Cedar. And she had already read it once it came out, obviously, um, but she spoke very highly of it. Um, I'm gonna actually read a little quote that she wrote um, in her recommendation for the book. Uh, she says, when we talk about the culture of food, we tend to do it through the, a lens with an ideology that goes unseen at worst, unexamined at best. In one fell swoop, Robin Wall Kimmerer shows us a different way of being in relationship with food. And in showing us that each fruit on an apple tree or kernel of corn has its own personality, she automatically highlights the trans transactional void left by a food system steeped in mainstream capitalist patriarchal values. This is a book that warms the heart and the belly. It is full of grief as it is of triumph, a story of radiance, relationship, and wholeness. And so when I when you know we were speaking with her and she had already read this book and just it's so deeply connected with her. Um, we kind of had that like those rumblings of okay maybe this is like a title we need to um, pay attention to and um, for you know beyond that I think um, slow food just like many organizations these days um, and individuals you know we're, we're at a point in our country where we're uh, kind of reckoning with our history and um, lifting up voices that are um, marginalized is is of importance so the fact that this speaks to um you know indigenous wisdom was also a, a big uh highlight um anyway yeah so i think that's um kind of the reasons for me personally of why uh this book just seemed like to have great synergy uh and yeah i'll turn it over to to tammy or margaret to kind of give their their input um, I can just add a little bit to that, that um, it's just a book that had been on my radar and I like that. I mean, I wasn't even really sure, like we've been saying, it's not exactly about food that much necessarily about the environment. And um, I like the the environmental focus of it and that it, that, I apologize, I don't know how to, to have my computer is making beeping noises right now. Um, I will mute after this. Uh, yeah, it just the that it's highlighting some different um, issues and our people groups of people that aren't as much in the main like aren't promoted as much and um, I think that are important things for for us to be talking about and, and covering so um, and another chapter actually contacted uh, one of the slow food USA chapters contacted us and asked us if we had planned anything about this book in particular, um, made any resources. And so we were like, no, but we've been thinking about this book and stuff. So it kind of helped get us going to do this. Yeah, I'll just add quickly, um, sort of echoing what um, Katie and, and Tammy have already uh, mentioned. Um, but And I feel like this is a book that just keeps rising to the top, both what we heard from folks contacting Slow Food, there was the Seed Summit this last winter, and I think that also speaks to a lot of the themes and that are attracting our attention these days, as well as um, you know that are sort of woven throughout this book. Um, it's been a very popular book here at my library and um, I've had so many conversations individually with people and so I'm excited to have a chance to sort of dig a little deeper with a group of people here and, and um, you know, hope that you all will have that same opportunity. I love the idea that she brings sort of the science and the storytelling together um, and shows that they aren't these two disparate worlds, but in fact, um, something that, uh, you know, there's some synergy there. So um, uh, yeah, that's about all I've got to say. <laughs> well, 
Thank you, Margaret and Tammy. Um, okay, so then we're going to go ahead. We actually uh, prepared a reading syllabus for the book. Um, we're going to kind of walk you through that. Uh, I think Brian's going to drop a link in the chat so that you can all access it. Um, but basically, uh, we put together just a document with, um, you know, kind of the basic specs of the book, um, you know, when it was, who published it, um, the author's website, how you can get the audio book, the ebook, and then of course, obviously, we'd love for you to purchase it, um, if not from an independent bookstore or the publish, publisher themselves, um, from our bookshop page, um, the Slow Books bookshop page. Uh, which also benefits, uh, if you purchase through Slow Food USA, uh, benefits the National Resilience Fund, which is also a great thing to be supporting. Um, okay, and then we've got, um, there's a, I've only really found one reading and discussion guide. It's by the uh, Longwood Gardens Library and Archives. Um, so there's some kind of like good starting points to go off of there. They also have some um, chapter, chapter summaries um, and then obviously we're gonna go through some um, discussion questions as well. Uh, we've got a list of reviews um, that you can look at to kind of glean some, some information from, uh, as well as interviews with the author, um, interviews about the book, podcasts and other profiles. Um, I, I will drop in the chat quickly. Um, it did come on our radar that there's a, um, publisher called the Center for Humans and Nature, and they are putting out a series of books shortly um, called Kinship that will be edited in part by Robin Walkimer, as well as a bunch of other environmental and food related names that you will, I'm sure, recognize. Um, they're actually having an event coming up let's see, in about a month, I believe. So if you want to get more of your Robin Wall Kimmerer fix, um, I believe she's one of the panelists for the event as well. So check that out. Um, and then uh, after that, we've got some discussion questions on how this will to get to slow food. Um, I, I apologize, I put together the discussion questions and I tend to get a little wordy. So um, that's why you're seeing a lot of text on the screen there right now. But um, what I tried to do is I pulled out some of the quotes that really resonated with me and tried to create um, some questions surrounding that. Um, so we've got, you know, a question, uh, questions about the Thanksgiving address and how does that relate back to the Slow Food Manifesto? And you know, uh, Robin talks about three sisters and, you know, I was actually introduced to three sisters through slow food. I, I didn't know originally that it was an indigenous practice. So that was really great to kind of get that history um, and find how those things kind of intertwine. Um, and, you know, then even just talking about, you know, in the beginning of the book, she references that, you know, we need to bring diversity to the table because diverse perspectives are what make things better. Um, and that kind of relates to this, this moment that we're all having where we're trying to center, um, you know, EIJ or uh, EDI, whatever you're calling it, you know, the, the equity and inclusion initiatives. Um, so all of this really relates back to, to slow food in a, a lot of ways. Um, I think we've also got a question about, um, you know, how when things feel so dire, you know, we just had a huge climate report come out and it was not great. Um, when things feel kind of hopeless, how do we find the motivation to keep going? I mean, I think all of us in the slow food movement can relate back to that. Um, I put a little snippet in there about uh, the last slow food nations that I was able to attend. I heard a little discussion from Jim Embry saying, how do we become snails on skateboards? Like change is so slow and we need to like speed up. How do we do that? Um, so just kind of pulling out some, some themes that relate back to a lot of the um, ideals, struggles, um, you know, the same, same values that we're talking about in, in the slow food realm um, directly relate back to this book. Uh, and then at the very end, we've got a kind of read, watch, listen guide. So there's a sampling of books um, from children's books to fiction to nonfiction um, related back to themes that 
that connect to the issues brought up in Braiding Sweetgrass. Um, there's some films to watch. There's some podcasts. Um, so just a, a kind of little, probably more information than you need, but like, you know, a bunch of information to get you started on, on how to make these intersections um, of the different conversations you can have around this book. That's it from me for right now. I think Tammy's going to take over and show you. We have a bunch of these resources actually listed in our bookshop page. So we're just going to give you a run through of what that looks like uh, and get you familiar with that with the bookshop site. Thanks, Katie. Um, let me switch over to that page. And so hopefully you guys can see this all right. This is um, the main screen when you go into our Slow Food USA bookshop page. So if you don't know, uh, bookshop is an organization that's trying to help funnel more money back to local bookstores. So when you go on there, like, I don't know if you can see on mine, sorry that I'm not more technologically um, good at technology but um anyway on mine it's somewhere it says like that it, that anything i buy from bookshop is going to my local bookstore that i selected that i chose on their site and then also when you um they help uh we get a little bit of money from any books that you buy through our site through our um lists also and it goes to the slow the resilience fund that we're um, helping to fund some different food nonprofits around the country. So, uh, so this is our introductory page. This is our first list, this featured list um, that are all those books that Katie just showed on the reading guide or um, book club guide for braiding sweetgrass. So, and you can scroll to the right. There's an arrow, or you can on my you can just drag if you have a trackpad. Um, and see some more of the books or you can click on the, the list and it will take you into the description uh, where it actually lists this meeting today and shows you all the books and um, it's not necessarily always these prices, um, but this one we do have the hardcover a special edition and the paperback featured, but some of them like we might have just listed like the hardcover and maybe there's a paperback option that will be cheaper if you're looking for different options. Um, so that's our list just for braiding sweetgrass. And then we have a whole bunch of other lists um, and some of them, like we've been adding them almost every month, but now we're gonna kind of slow down with that because we don't wanna have a million lists for it. But um, these are some that we recommended at the end of the year. So we've got, we actually have Braiding Sweetgrass on the first three lists on our page, I noticed. Um, I believe Woman in Food. Um, but we try to have children's books a lot of the time on a lot of the lists. So um, at least a few um, cookbooks. So, and there's one I was just gonna use as an example, like some of them we've given little blurbs. So, um, like on this one, it's not just showing all the pictures of the books, but it has them with the um, reviews from curators. And if anyone listening, anyone wants to join us, or if you, even if you ever just want to give us a little blurb for a book or a book you recommend for our list or one that's already on the list um, that you've done with your slow food group or just in general, why something not too, too long, but why you think it might be a good book for our Slow Food USA bookshop page, then send those along to us. Um, so that's pretty much that. I don't know if anyone wants to add to that. Yeah, I'll just say really quickly, I, I thought I put the uh, link to our uh, Slow Books page into the chat, but I actually just put it to panelists by accident. So I'm yeah. gonna put that in again. Um, and as we kind of mentioned before, we've got, you'll see um, kind of on the Landy page there, we've got the, the monthly recommendations, we've got a link to the, the bookshop. Um, and then there's also actually a link at the bottom, um, just above our um, curator 
uh, bios, there's a link to the resources that we put together for how to be an anti-racist as well, in case you wanna go back and revisit some of those conversations. Um, and then just, I wanted to put on top of um, Tammy's comment, you know, we are trying to be conscious of, um, you know, providing uh, book recommendations for readers of all ages. You know, I'm sure many of you have children at home or children in your life. You know, we're trying to, to cater to young readers as well. Um, we did a partnership with Readers to Eaters last year um, around the holidays, promoting some kids books and some kids books in Spanish as well. Um, so again, as Tammy said, we're, all, we're always looking for suggestions to, to make uh, the books that we recommend more inclusive and more accessible uh, to a wider range of people. So if you have things that you come across, across that you think would be a great fit and you're willing to do a little blurb, we would absolutely love that. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I think the next thing on our agenda is uh, I can bring up the, um, we have a virtual discussion guide that was created the last time we did the how to be anti-racist uh, network wide read. So I will just bring up that screen and um, that you can access this from the Slow Food USA. There's a Slow Books tab uh, page, or I don't know, maybe somebody, if Katie or Margaret, if you don't mind putting that in the chat, that would be great so that people can access. Um, that and I'll get over to. Um, oh, good. Here we go. So it's called the Virtual Book Club Toolkit, and um, yeah, went on the Slow Food USA page. It's actually like three things together that you have to download, but this is one of them. So this is specifically for holding a virtual book club discussion, but it could be. I mean, there's a lot of just general tips that would be good for any type of book club, whether you're doing them in person or not. I know Slow Food uh, Santa Fe, unfortunately, they just started going back in person. They do a book club every meeting every month, and they had done two in person, I believe, and then they just decided to go back to through virtual. So unfortunately, we're still, um, you know, in that situation, yes. meeting that. Um, all right, so let's see, we've got all kinds of information um, that lists the bookshop page link there. Um, so just planning, getting started, how do you, how are you going to advertise? Um, let's see. Um, so, oh, um, maybe like giving out sort of um, an incentive to get people to join, whether you want to, wait, sorry, I think I'm skipping ahead here. Let me, um, look at this. Um, sorry, guys. Yeah, just a lot of different kinds of um, tips, but this is what I was thinking of. Um, you could have uh, people RSVP, um, for the virtual event, it it might help it to be a little bit more of um, getting people to come to the meeting, I guess, and you can send them reminders that way rather than just like, whoever wants to come, come, and you don't know who's even, you know, if anyone's coming or not and stuff like that. Um, so there's some information on the different platforms that you can use um, and which ones might be more recommended or not. And um, a cool thing, if we're, um, I guess, Brian or Felix, if you, if we're not still doing offering this, um, let us know. But we have on here that uh, Slow Food USA does have a paid Zoom account that they're willing to um, scheduling permitting. They could let your chapter use if you if you need that because otherwise you can only go for 40 minutes and then you have to restart the meeting, which I've done. I've been in a meeting like that and it's not very effective. So, because it, was, it wasn't planned ahead of time, I guess. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, so rehearsing technology ahead of time to make sure you, everything's working and you know how to do everything. Um, and this was an interesting one to me 
muting or not muting, like you can just say, you know, everyone, um, maybe encourage everyone to be unmuted and then they'll be more, uh, you know, free to join in and say things um, and, and participate. So having a backup plan, um, uh, just remembering like Katie did at the beginning, kind of just in case there's somebody who's totally new to slow food, um, giving them a little uh, information and background on the group and you know your chapter, any upcoming events and things is a great idea. Um, having time for introduction. Uh, I did see in our chat, we've got some people, from, some from Canada, someone from Hawaii, that's really awesome. And we're gonna give you guys some time to, we really wanna hear from you more in the chat. And at the end, we're gonna um, definitely wanna hear from you guys. And if if that anytime, if you have a question, you wanna just jump in to any of this, let's see. Um, yeah, just starting out as you're opening, getting uh, reactions, general reactions. I like that idea. Um, and then I know there's something on here about like just tips, general tips for coming up with discussion questions. Um, this is the information about the code of conduct that we shared in the chat that might be helpful if you're covering something that's a sensitive topic or just in, in general, it could be uh, helpful to have some kind of expectations and knowing that people, it's not gonna be okay for somebody to be attacking someone else or something like that. Hopefully that wouldn't happen anyway, but just in case. Um, yeah, just lots of tips on how to run a book group in general and then, um, how long you want it to be. Do you want to have a set beginning and ending time? Uh, places, some places you can look for more um, resources to follow up. And yeah, I guess, yeah, here's some more of that. And so we hope that this is helpful for you guys and let us know if there's any questions about that. Thank you. In some of the webinars I've been in lately, it seems like um, a lot of people actually have been submitting questions in advance, and then whoever the moderator is kind of has to go in and edit down. Okay, well, we got like 20 questions, but we're only going to get to five in the time that's allowed, or like, you know, let's kind of group these into categories that make the most sense. Um, so, you know, having a plan is, is great, but obviously sometimes timing gets off track or the discussion gets off track. So there's kind of that balance of, you know, you want to plan ahead, but you also kind of have to allow things to, to unfold organically as well. So um, that's what helps to have resources at, in your back pocket uh, to kind of be prepared for some of those things. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all that we have on our agenda for tonight. Uh, I know we've done a lot of talking at you, so um, you're here tonight. Do you have questions for us? Um, you know, is this is this helpful? What else do you foresee needing for bringing a discussion of braiding sweetgrass back to your community? We're gonna yield the floor back to you all. And I noticed some of you have already read it or partly read it. So also, if you have any thoughts. Uh, yeah, why, why does this book seem important to you or like if it would or wouldn't be good for a slow food discussion group? Um, um, is it okay to say something? <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, aloha, uh, I'm calling from Hawaii Island. My name is Andy Kuo. And I, I used the book as when I was uh, teaching a class at um, SIT in Vermont. It's located there. It's an online course. It's an international course. And um, what, what we'd like to do, <laughs> this is our idea, is um, to read the book and then to align it with our Native Hawaiian perspective, because I, it resonated so much as a Native Hawaiian um, and the practices, you know, that are so uh, common sense to us, you know, kind of thing, and just kind of make that connection. So that's kind of our plan on how we would like to use the book is 
uh, working with uh, native youth, um, we have a we just launched what is called EA, which means Education with Aloha Ecoversity. Ecoversity, I don't know if you've heard of the Ecoversities Network. Uh, it's about reimagining higher education, but with the idea that everybody should learn about taking care of the earth. In, in addition to whatever else you want to learn kind of thing. And so we are Hawaii's first ecoversity, uh, specifically for targeting Native Hawaiians. Um, but the idea really being to align it with our, our Hawaiian worldview because it's so very, very similar. And so that's kind of going to be, and so we, I first of all, just want to thank you for all the resources that you provided. This will be wonderful. Um, I've never been part of a book club. Um, we, I live in the boonies, so they would just never happen. Um, um, but I, I love reading and et cetera, et cetera. So what you, what you provided is going to be very, very helpful for us. But that's kind of our plan is to, to uh, focus on similarities and differences and just kind of exploring the book, which I absolutely love, um, <laughs> and then aligning it with our Hawaiian worldview. So it's not so much a question, but thanking you folks and, and telling you what our plan is. <laughs> that sounds amazing. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, and thank you too uh, for, for your gratitude for the resources. I'm glad they'll, they'll prove useful for you. Um, you know, we're all gonna have different filters that we're gonna see, see things through. So I think it's great that you're aligning it with your, your native culture and um, it's almost more resonant that way you know, having that parallel. So anybody else want to speak up? We don't, we don't bite, I promise. <laughs> yeah, feel free to share even just who you are, where you're from, maybe what drew you to, drew you to the book or to this discussion too. And, um, and just to, uh, sorry, it was uh, the last person who spoke, if you even want to feel like giving any feedback after you do your um, book club to us that we could incorporate into our resources that might be be helpful too. no pressure. <laughs> yeah, we're all book people here. So, so we're here to support in any way. So we are also volunteers. So I have to walk behind, but you know, we're here, we're here to help you out however we can. Hi there, I'm Kathy, I'm from Virginia. I am a um, educational coordinator at an urban village garden. And we have interns um, from the universities. We have four different universities here or colleges or um, a community college also. Um, we have JMU, Eastern Mennonite University, and then we have the community college and, um, and a Bridgewater College. And so we have lots of interns at our village garden and a lot of these universities use these books um, it, as, and a lot of these students have, and these interns come knowing about braiding sweetgrass. And I read about halfway through, but I have this thing about, I can't remember exactly, you know, the content. So I always have to keep it fresh in my mind. So I thought being with you all, it'd be really helpful for me um, to really um, go through this. Um, now, is this, are we, is this training, are we gonna have a book club? I mean, are we gonna read this together? How does this work exactly? That'd be very helpful to me. Like, do we do, you know, I know it's not chapters, it's, yeah. I, I might've missed something somewhere, sorry. Yeah. No, um, yeah, it's um, what we're, we did last time was we did have a, um, a discussion online about how to be anti-racist and we, but we were also encouraging the chapters to do their own discussions and this time around, I guess that was one of the questions we were going to ask, is that right, Margaret and Katie, if we, if it would be helpful to have an online discussion together, but we are definitely encouraging chap local chapters to discuss the book. Um, and so I guess maybe we, we would need to ask them, I don't know, there's a question of how to get that information out to people, like what are the groups that are gonna do it? And maybe you could join one of those or, and or maybe we'll do one 
ourselves. I see, I'm not sure. I see what you're saying. So you're wanting feedback from our groups is what, you know, as we read it or, but we're not reading it together um, and having our own book group. So we kind of set a broad parameter of that, you know, this, this is the book that the network mm -hmm. wants to pick for this year. So this is the network wide read and we're going to read it during the fall. So I think we said like September to October. And yeah, I think the idea is kind of you as, as chapters, you as, you know, communities or individuals or, or whatnot, if you want to take this and run with it, go for it. Um, but, you know, that being said, if an online, you know, group discussion, you know, we're, we're all still kind of in that virtual world right now, given everything that's going on with the pandemic, if, if that would be helpful, we can look into setting that up. Um, it's, it's more a matter of we want that feedback before we go ahead and set it up. And, you know, like I said, we are volunteers, but we love books and love talking about books. So if that's something that you think would be helpful, we can make that happen. Um, but yeah, it's, it's more like kind of let's put our feelers out there and see, see what the reaction is first. So. Mm -hmm. I, um, we were just at Navajo Nation and the Apache reservations for three weeks. Um, my husband is a professor at one of these universities and um, I got to get a piece of braiding sweetgrass at one of the Navajo, uh, the stores, the Diné, um, population there have these um, stores and there was, there was some breeding sweetgrass in one of them um, for purchase. And so I have that in my office just as a reminder because, you know, the gift of strawberries and all the different, you know, um, I don't know what they call it in here, not section, not chapters, but sections. Um, yeah, it's very meaningful. And um, thank you all for doing this because it's very timely and hearing about boarding schools and what um, these Native Americans, what has happened to them and then seeing two to three generations later, how um, it, it's just, I think using storytelling and using this as a study book is a great way to begin in our community to talk about, to talk about it because yeah, um, and also, we don't have this book in Spanish, and so a lot of my coworkers are, um, they speak Spanish, and so it's very difficult, you know, to have these group discussions with people um, that speak Spanish, so we're trying to get their indigenous wisdoms from Mexico or Guatemala or Honduras, wherever they're from, um, because they're from those populations, and um, yeah, that would be so helpful to have that expanded to include them in conversations because they have so much to add. That's a Thanks. good point. I'll stop talking. <laughs> no, thank you for sharing. That's really good to know where you're coming from and your perspective on the book and why you're here and all that. So thank you. Yeah. I, th I think it could be selfishly, I think it could be really useful to have a an online discussion it might not be follow like today we're talking about sections one through three or whatever but sort of coming together to share the experiences of what that network by the was like for people um I, I think that could be really um meaningful especially the different places you know hearing about the native hawaiian um, and what, whatever anybody else might, you know, how they might make it more their own with their place, which I think is also such a part of what, you know, Slow Food seems to celebrate as well. I just remembered that we got a discount for the book, but I don't have that information to share. Do you guys know, are we putting that on the website? I was going to say, I. I think we're still ironing out details for that, but keep okay. an eye out. We, yeah. we may have reached a, an agreement with Milkweed Editions to give a, a discount to those of you who would be interested in hosting a book club and, and purchasing the book for that group. Um, so keep, keep an eye out, details TBD. Um, yeah, I yeah. Brian says more information. Yeah. And, and I would add as a plug for libraries, um, don't forget to encourage your local library to host uh, the book discussion. So 
there's a lot of people that would, would enjoy it. And it's a nice collaboration between a close to chapter and library. And Kathy, I did just want to add, I know you were mentioning the, um, you know, language barrier and, and resources in Spanish. There was a um, children's book that I found that is available in Spanish. I, unfortunately, I don't think it was available through Bookshop, um, but it is on that um, reading syllabus in, in the reading guide at the end. Um, it was more of a, you know, kind of environmental guide for, you know, how to save the world kind of thing geared towards kids, but it might be a, a place to, to start to just kind of make some of those connections to, to what the book is talking about. Um, and I just wanted to add too, you know, I think talking about literally like braiding sweetgrass, I feel like these, these concepts are braided together. Like if you care about where your food comes from and how it got to your plate, you care about how things are grown and um, how it affects the environment. And, and those are all this, the things that um, Robin talks about in the book, you know, um, there's also kind of, if, you, if you're familiar with Arc of Taste, which is a slow food initiative, you know, kind of trying to preserve these uh, rare ingredients and even livestock um, that are at risk of extinction. You know, you're also trying to um, cultivate saving a culture and, and saving language and saving, you know, there's all these other things that get rolled into it. So I, I, I love seeing that, you know, the, the two of you that have spoken up tonight you know, there's different intersections that are braided into to your filter of how you're going to view and discuss this book. Um, and as Margaret said, I think um, as long as we can kind of, you know, pull it off, I think hosting some kind of follow up uh, discussion uh, of the book itself and of your experiences um, discussing the book with your communities could be really rewarding. Well, we are just about at time. I think we we do have a little bit time left if anyone wants to add anything, but that was everything that we had on our agenda to cover for tonight. Um, again, be in touch, stay tuned, uh, keep an eye out for that discount, more details soon. Um, in the meantime, you know, look over these resources. Um, we can probably come up with uh, one that you as well. We can kind of coordinate on that um, just so you have it all in one place. Uh, but thank you for being here. Thank you for uh, for sharing. And uh, we look forward to hearing how, how your discussions go. Yeah, thank you all for being here. And for your comments in the chat box too. Take care, everyone. Be well. Mm -hmm.